alive. Brother Dave just contacted me and let me know that he is home and he's heading to the computer right now. So I just want to let you know that we are live and we are setting it up. And this is going to be a fabulous show tonight. It's going to be very informative. And he's not going to sugarcoat anything, but he's going to bring it to you real and raw. And the responses to all of the programs that we've done over the years has been phenomenal because I would basically say that he's batting 100. I mean, in everything that he says, in all sincerity, um, he lets you have it. And this is not about fear mongering. This is not about uh, sensationalism. This is about raw truth. He's going to bring it tonight in a very cool, concise, very digestible manner that you, you can understand. So we're going to wait for him. And I'm going to just chit chat a little bit until he gets on. He just called me. I put a little music on to start everything out. And of course, you can pretty much understand what he is going to talk about because I see the banner in front of you. And um, it's, it's not a pleasant thing that we really want to face, but it's necessary to dissect it so we can be very realistic on what is. Because I will say that there is a lot of fear mongering out here. There is a lot of uh, fake and false news out here. Because it's of my personal opinion that we live in this world, but we're not the only entities that live in this world. And there are entities out here that are feeding of the fear that's produced by the constant YouTube videos that come out with uh, the fear mongering type titles to keep you scared. And they keep doing it. And, and I just can't understand it. They do this clickbait to get you to click on so they can get make money off of your fear. And they're not really always telling the whole truth. They might take one thing and run with it. And so that being said, before we start, and he'll be here in a few minutes. He was just paused. So I have long to wait. He will be here. And like I said, this is long overdue because he's been extremely busy with his business and, and things that he's doing. So I just want to acknowledge those who are here, Sheila Hendricks and Sugar PB. Much love to you. You're hung in with me for over the years. Natural Selection 8, Indigo King, of course, always much respect, King. Megan Mallard, yes, always, always a pleasure to see you here. Wayne Gaithright, um, Matthew White, Apache, yes, Leonard DeJuda, okay, and Mixed. Genre phase. Yes, we're going to do something this week. If you're up for it this week, within the next few days, whenever you're free, Tracy J. And Reese, I'm always teasing you about slipping in the back door and chilling out in the back. You think you're not even here yet, but you're right there listening to everything. Yes. Again, it is hot over here in a Ghana, and I am sweating profusely. I always do that. D.D. Heyman, yes, I'm welcome, welcoming you on in. We're just waiting for Brother Dave. So the 42 that are here, you do not want to miss this. Do not want to miss this. If you go to the Landscurf page on YouTube, even after the show, and just go ahead and listen to some of the past shows that we've done talking about this present time, you'll be really surprised at how on point he is. Breezy, how are you? That's right. <laughs> Well, we got everybody up in here. Brother Dave's name brings some weight now, doesn't it? Because you know he doesn't play. Even though he's a gentleman, you know, he doesn't play with uh, your mind or, or come with the stuff that ends up being vague. You know, because we have a lot of people out here who don't study, who have no experience, and they just want to hear themselves talk. You know, if I don't know something, family, I'm going to tell you, listen, I don't know this. I got to get with somebody who, who can tell me, you know. So let's make sure the camera's right. It's my first time seeing myself. <laughs> I'm not that vain, but welcome back, family. I'm here, and um, this is going to be one of those gems. Every time he comes here, it's, it's a gem. But again, I'm appreciative of him and all of you being here because your time is precious, and I know his time is really precious. You know, cram a lot in. Let me play around with these buttons and see if I don't mess up. Let me see something here. Okay. Oh, no, I can't mess around with this. Not now. Nah, we can't miss with anything on the show. Everything is going just right. 
But, you know, this is an uncertain time, and I don't know. I can speak for you, too. This is the world that we really anticipated being in. I mean, I know we are knowledgeable of things, but we did not know it was going to be this far gone so fast. You know what I mean? I mean, 2001, we had the 911 World Trade Center attacks, and people said, oh, yeah, you guys are conspiracy theorists. This is You're looking for the worst thing. But look at the world the way it is now. So if we look at that trajectory from that time to this time, Whoop, we have Brother Dave coming on in here. Yes. <laughs> My brother. Yes. What's up, Lance? <laughs> Turn your cam so we can see more of you sideways, if possible, or your phone. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. It may be locked. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's locked. It, it's okay. You're here, brother. You're here. Brother, awesome. you're looking well, glowing in the midst ah. of the world, being the way it is right now. And um, all I can say is an honor and a pleasure. We know that you're a very, very busy man, but we appreciate the time that you come to spend with us to enlighten us. And I don't know how you can remain so cool in the things that you do, but that shows resiliency because you're a very strong brother. And um, I was telling everybody here that there's a lot of fear mongering, but you bring it straight, that you don't create the fear mongering. You give it to them as it is, realistic. And we appreciate that. That's why we have the amount of people waiting here on your name alone. It was somebody else. But when Brother Dave is on there, like I'm getting text messages. They're like, oh, man, is this for real? He's going to be on tonight. I'm like, yes, he is. Tune in and let's flow. How are you doing tonight, brother? I'm good, Lance. Uh, first, first of all, man, I appreciate I thank the great creator for you. And um, everyone, all your listeners, but I just really want to take a, a quick second to tell you, Lance, um, you know, you've been heavy on my mind. Um, you know, some of the things that 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 we do, some of the things I've been going through, uh, a yes. little transitional part of my life, which is, you know, it's, it's cool. It's yeah. it's I, I love the full journey of life. And that's, you know, yes. but I will tell you um, privately, Lance is someone. I can talk to about anything. What you see with this brother is is genuine. And I really, really, really do appreciate it. There's there. You know, you have those. Sacred relationships, you have some people that I, I basically and I, I may have said this before, I basically break it down into three categories of friends. Mm -hmm. A four. And there's the one that confirms the one that gives direction, there's the fool and the wise. <laughs> right? I like so that. There's, you get your direction from one person. Then another person confirms it. Then one of the things I always do is I always go to the fool. And I never tell the fool who the fool is. I go to the fool because whatever the fool says to do, I do the opposite. Right, right. And the wise, I just listen to. And you are one of the wise that I just listen to when we talk. And you, I, I cherish that. Now, I, I want to do that more. But here's the thing about the four. You have to be able to distinguish when the wise becomes the direction or the wise become the confirmation or the wise becomes the fool. Or one day the fool will become the wise. Will you be able to discern that there's been a change? Because the fool may be you. That's right. Because we're, right. we're so capable of, of everything. And so I just, every time that, you know, we've never sat in each other's physical presence, but we've right. never not been apart, you know? So right. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing. And, and it goes back to Roz, um, you know. Yes, Brother Roz. Roz um, is, is, is a good, good friend that became an elder uh, in leading us now. And I, I, I miss being able to physically attach to him because that's what I'm used to. It's not all that I've known, but it's the, right. it's the closest remembrance. And I have to dig deep for everything else, which is fine. 
But um, yes. you know, Roz and I from Tando Radio Show. He's always been a part of it. As a, a couple of Tando Radio sh listeners that listen here, they know Roz, and your listeners know Roz. And Roz is a gem, and I really do appreciate him because you know Roz really did. Before Rise made the great transformation, he told me how he wanted his transformation service to go. And his wife, Holly, fulfilled everything. And his son, Wes, is just an amazing individual. One of those, one of the most intellectual brothers, this, this man is a walking public and private library. And that doesn't surprise me. So walk in public and private library. And our connection started off with Lance from Blackonomics. We grew it into Tando, met Roz doing Tando. Uh, Roz, you know, got with, with, with Lance and just Roz just dro dropped some, some jewels. And I always pay homage to the people that have and pay tribute to the people that have really sacrificed and unselfishly gave to us sometimes what we don't deserve. So that Sorry. one day we'll stop being so selfish and start being more collective. And that, I don't think that there was anybody that really exemplified that more than you and Roz. And I so appreciate that bond no, that we that we have. Yes. No, I say I, I pale in comparison to him. He is he is a standard. Yeah. He he is a standard that those who attempt to emulate what he not done in the pet what he is doing because right. every word truth is a current thing. The body may have gone back and the spirit may have transitioned on, but truth lives and it's a living thing. And when you can speak the truths that many of us have yet to even discover that he's gone down that trail and collected these truths that many of us are walking around haven't gotten to the level to be able to absorb this thing he lives through that. Yes. But energy of a so he lives in a different formation, but the truth that he gives lives and is current and is feeding people now. When you say two plus two is four, whoever <laughs> was the first one to utter such words, if they're gone, it doesn't mean that it's oh. any less true than it is. So this is why when we live a life in the pursuit of truth, and extracting it out of all of the falsehoods and distractions in life, that's a job that's done that's never really appreciated until a person is gone. But he's not gone to us because we both can speak of him. And so he continues to meet us. And I suggest anyone to go to the old archives of the shows that we've done and just put in R-A-S and it will pop up and you will see what an amazing individual he is because of the truth. Man, well, so true and, and well, well spoke of of a friend. And, you know, Rise considers us more than just friends. We're 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 brothers. And I um I truly do appreciate because I, I really felt over these past couple of months and, and weeks when I haven't been able to uh, uh, reach out to you. I, I felt, and I know Lance, Lance has always laid that carpet out for me, has opened that door and has always said, I may not be at the house, but here's the key is over here or just use your key. Because this brother always opens up everything. And, and I just... I, I watched Lance when he was at the concert, uh, the Erica Badu concert, 
And I watched Lance, you know, just doing his, and it's, I'm just amazed that true journalism, you know, some of the stuff, and I never really told you this, you know, some of the stuff that I find the, the most, the, the treasures that you drop and the treasures, I, I, let me rephrase that, the treasures that you collect is when you speak to people that the rest the rest of media runs away from you speak beyond image you challenge the individuality of people and you challenge them to stay true to who they are and introduce themselves lance and and it's amazing how you recognize and you give voice to and you give an opportunity for us to see that it's not about what we really think is fucked up <laughs> right <laughs> because we are all messed up in so many ways yes, we are. but how you can really attack identify and attach and love something that you think is fucked up because that's a valuable thing that you do because that allows us to look at ourselves and all of our flaws in a loving way. And I <laughs> don't, right. don't see how this isn't an Emmy. This is an Emmy, a Pulsar Prize winning show because you bring humanality to our existence that we try to deny and i love you for that lance you and the thank queen you. thank you so much we love you too i love you unconditionally no matter what there's never no questions on my side the door is always open the credit card is always there the fridge is always <laughs> the car keys that I don't have a car yet will be there for you. And this yeah. is not just cheap talk because your words have soothed me in life, whether you knew it or not, through the videos that we've had and the private conversations that we've had and things that we've shared. And, you know, everybody knows I have a, a physical brother, 11 years older than me, that is out there on drugs that has never really had a full relationship with me. And I've always yeah. yearned for life and i will say that you have fulfilled that for me you're the brother that i can look up to you're the brother that i can aspire to be like you're the brother that i'm proud of i sincerely mean that and i want to meet with you physically in this life but if it doesn't happen brother because of the times that we're in know that i love you with all my heart and has no homo inclinations in there i brother oh, to brother no. black man to black man i love you with all my heart and if there's anything I can do in any way I can promote, help, aid, you, whoever, family, friends of yours, unconditionally I'm here as much as I can be because I'm a servant, brother. And, and, and what you've shown me has sharpened me to make me better. Just you being who you are. I admire you greatly. You inspire me greatly. And I have to see that, that if that time doesn't happen where I can reach out and say, my brother... Missed you. I love you. You filled voids in my heart that I've had all my life. Where my brother physically, the DNA sharer, has disappointed me time and time again because of his drug usage and confusion in his life, which I still love him. You have unconditionally and unselfishly given of yourself to make me feel that I really do truly have a brother. Seriously, and I mean that. Man, Lance, it's it's mirrored with me um, because, you know, my my, um, my oldest brother, my biological oldest brother, uh, like you, was 11 years older than me, made the great transformation. And, and it was great because he really protected me. He was he was dark as as the blackest part of the screen. Um, mm -hmm. And he protected me because uh the, the rest of the family kind of shunned me because 
of a lot of different things. And but he was always there. And it's like very much like you and, and you, you and my brother share so many personality traits and, and such charisma and such attachment to people that is is I, I kind of I kind of shake my head to, to try to not to right. uh, uh, be brought into a a questionable emotional state, you know, right. and everything we are truly brothers and we are going to definitely commune great creator willing physically. But I, I always kind of try. I remember the day. <laughs> you remember where I was yep. when I got a message from a brother named Lance Skurve. And said that you wanted to talk about something I said on the radio. And that was true love is what you give away. Well, I, I forgot what the quote was. It'll come to me in a little bit. But, oh, the true measure of love is when you stop living for yourself and start living for the advancement of someone else. Lance messaged me that, and that was the start of our relationship. And I thought it was so, it was so iconic of him because, you ready? What other masculine man speaks in a masculine question and message? That was the most masculine thing that you could do because he, you saw the value of it and you said, let's talk. That was a masculine spirit because a warrior, a soldier can never do what a warrior thinks. A warrior sustains life. And you, Lance, under, understood the life sustaining necessity of being sovereign just from that statement. And we I remember I was driving back from from uh uh, from Washington, from Seattle, Washington. And we talked on the phone and we talked for like an hour and a half. <laughs> Man, I didn't know who I was, didn't, didn't know anything about me, didn't care. Just being the great journalist that he is and said, let's talk about this. What, what, what did you mean by this? And so right away, I knew that we were going to be what we are now and so much more. And so I really do appreciate you so much, my brother. And I look forward to spending time with you and the queen. And um, so I, 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 I can't ask for any more. And in some, some of the, you know, I just uh, recently went through a, a divorce and I told Lance, and you know, this brother was so comforting. And, you know, my um, my ex-wife loved her to death, could never would never say anything bad about her. Can't you know, she, I married her for a reason. And Lance, you know, Lance knows and, and spoke and, and had a, a relationship similar to to ours. And but, you know, Lance, because he's been in so many life situations, he knew exactly what to. He knew exactly where to place me for sustainability and Lance I'll never forget that I'll never forget I, when I told you and and was, just how, how how you actually placed me to stand and man I appreciate it so much and I didn't mean to to get too personal but no no this no, this this, your, this, this brother too. is 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 real and this brother is so valuable we 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 often forget we like i always say we've been no, we've been taught to know the price of everything and the value of nothing and so we walk right past all the valuable jewels and this is one valuable jewel and this is one valuable king warrior that we have among us that is because of price is left not giving the sustainability that we all should be acquiring from him. And Lance, I don't care. 
You are the best journalist on this fucking planet. Wow. You, you are the best journalist on this fucking planet. That's why you don't have corporate sponsors. For all the other reasons that people compromise their morality to get established and to so-called make it. Because I will tell you, Lance, how can you be a, a child of the great creator when you're on the devil's payroll? Everybody wants to get on the devil's payroll. Lance won't compromise. Won't compromise. And that's a sustaining force that we really, truly all need. And so... Once again, bruh, thank you for being my big brother. And I can't wait for us to, 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 to watch to watch some old tapes of Sonny Liston, of Joe Lewis, of probably the greatest, the greatest analyst of boxing and being in, in it is Mike Tyson because of cuss. Cuss taught him so damn much. And and it was never wasted to, to sit and watch George Foreman, Tommy Hearns, Marvin Hagler. Yes. Just just where me and you are just going to be sitting there, either here or there. That's right. Do, doing it because I, I can't wait to reminisce on just our overall journey is because it's it's a priceless one. Yeah. But I've been rambling too much on on on, on brother. I could never I hope get everybody enough. this is a personal time for me and Lance because I really did feel Lance saying, Hey Dave, uh, uh, where you at? D Dave is is Dave is 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 time. And so <laughs> we will get into it, but I don't want to walk away from this priceless moment right with, with, with you all and lance is i remember when lance told me he was going to be moving to ghana and i remember i said well lance i i support you in everything you do and i think this is the right time to do it because i think if you wait too long it'll it, it, it'll be it'll be the wrong time you don't want you want you want to get somewhere in enough time to make the great adjustment to it because you know, Lance, everything is an adjustment. It is. Everything is adjustment. And what I loved about you and the queen was that you wasn't the, the, the unknown, which everybody is punked to. I've seen some of the greatest bullies cower and punk or in some of the, even some very, you know, Persons and people of valor cower and punk to the unknown. Not this man. Because, man, check this out. I, I want to get into this before getting shipped. I want you to really think about Lance's journey. Is Lance not like the great prophets in, in the great men of, of God, of the great creator. Let me tell you why. He grew up in a forbidden city during a forbidden time. If you know when the time that Lance was growing up in New York City, New York City, Times Square was the center of debauchery. And Lance... Here. Yeah, <laughs> you heard, I was there, you know, and Lance grew up through and became of age during the crack era. Where he had conscious decision for himself as as a young adult. Yes. Didn't move. But saw all of this and. Was actually worked in those that are confined and was able to minister to those that were confined in prison. Yeah. Ben really started to stretch his wings and really stepped up to become a bus driver. Do you know how many people 
I don't care what your religious belief is, but just hear me or, or what your overall discipline is. You know how many Jesuses he'd offered assistance to and they spoke to Lance? I think you know what happens, Lance. I think it, it comes that sometimes in our jobs I think the great creator in despising that comes to the children at their jobs the most That's right. and you know why I think that the, that the great creator comes to you at your job the most because our job is in full, is in full retrobate of what your birthright is. So why wouldn't I go to where you are? Why wouldn't I go to where you are? And in Lance doing that, you know how many people he ran across and the energy he ran across as a as providing a path because that's really what you were doing providing a path and that path Lance I'm going to tell you that path wasn't for them it was for you and look what it's created and what, look what it look what it's made in you So I don't know how many times you spoke to the greatest prophets because they all came before you and they all chatted with you. You know what they all did? They all were ministered by you. What greater thing that opened the door for them to come in, you minister to them and then you send them on the path at their arrived destination to go forth. That's what you do. It's what you do here. Wow. That's what you did there. That's what you did in corrections. That's what you did in New York City. You are the I path said, provider. But I, I never, the way you just worded it, it's like it's hitting me. I agree with you, but I agree with you in a very humble manner because I'm a servant. I never a label of myself and said, I am this and this is what I do. But the way you broke it down in hindsight through my journey in life so far, because, you know, on April 8th, I turned 60 years old. So I'm still looking forward to much to do, but I have a lot to look back on. Although I'm not going to harp on it, I draw from it. I draw from the past. I don't look back. That's all it is because right. I can draw from the past to go and be more mighty and more powerful, and more determined in the future. We all have a future. We all don't know how long we're going to be here, but every step away, we have to make each step sure footed. We have to know where we're going. Even if we don't know way down the road, we have to know what's going and we must break embrace the unknown because the unknown will one day be known. And it could be a sweet known. But if right. you're afraid of it because now it's unknown, you'll never step forward fast enough to embrace that sweetness. You see what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to say one more thing, and I've said it before. When we come into the world, usually we're coming into the world crying because it's cold and there's lights on us. And we're coming from somewhere that we knew well. And we don't know this thing, but after a time being here, we don't want to let it go. Now, once again, many of us are afraid of the unknown, so we don't want to speak about transitioning or our mortality. But we know powerful, wonderful people like Brother Ross, who's already there. So how bad could it be when you did what you have to do on this level? So for me, I got to do what I have to do on this level in an unselfish way, in a selfless way, and bring myself into that heaven on earth because my mind is clear 
and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And I embrace that. If I'm supposed to come to your house and sweep the floors and clean the toilets, I'll do so in a joyful spirit. Whatever it is my task. I knew it would come to this, right? All the way. Because there are a lot of people I talk to locked up or in transit. Wonderful conversations and a gazillion stories that many have come back here who didn't know me but saw my face and said, that's the guy that talked to me 15 years ago on the bus. And I've had people call in the show and tell me the exact incident and what we said. I'm like, wow, it's a mind blower. You know what? It's an honor, brother, as a servant. The hours that people don't see that I work at this desk and and do so happily until I'm falling asleep and I want to do more and more. It's like a fighter giving us all until... He can't throw, he throw a punch and fall out on the ground, but he went out on the shield. So for me, who had gone through so much in different phases of my life that were a little wanton, now I can make up and learn and draw from those experiences and other experiences passed down from my parents and little wonderful people that I met and the brother that I have in you to be able to do what it is I have to do. And I, I'm, I'm very happy right now because of that, to have the time to do so. I, I think I, it's out of me. Definitely, and I'm I'm a I'm gonna just uh, just add one thing on that, and you know, and it brought to my mind a client of mine, Kay Bryant, said this to me. I'll never forget it. it says, David, remember. When you were born, you weren't given life. You were just given a body. You were just given a body. You weren't given life. So many of us think that our bodies is our life. It's not. And I appreciate Brother K. Bryant for that. For always. Always. Just... And that's what you exemplify, brother. So let's get into. Thank you. Let's get into this show. And I. uh, We've been coming on the show for a while and we've been. We've been trying to get. As many people, you know, because our community is always underserved and always misserved purposely because of the valuable energy, the wealth capabilities of our tribe. And we don't, I don't know all of the correct things to do. So I go back to the basics of what is correct. And this is why I became a involved in precious metals because It's a truth that's undeniable, regardless of our opinion, our feelings, our political views, our neighborhood views, our tribal views. It is just a truth. And the greatest thing about that truth is that it sustains life. And when you start to understand how that works. I I remember so many times when, when on the show. I would get messages of of doubters, of of questioners. And I would just say, I never talk about anything I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Right. So if you have a question about something, you know, there's a difference between a question and a challenge. One of the things that we've we've been taught to do that's deserving to us is that we've been taught to challenge truth for our own individual willful wants outside of our needs. And what does that mean? We just become self selfish because we say this with no understanding, no no fact finding. We say this, Lance. I don't believe that. Well, the world really doesn't give a shit about what you believe. The world moves off what you know. 
and you actually move off of what you know if you're going in the right direction. Right. Because what you believe and what you know is two different dynamics. Mm -hmm. I put very little emphasis on what I believe. I put more emphasis on what I know. Why is that so important? Because if I put emphasis on what I believe, every trick in every trick that's available is going to try to come and turn me. Every trick that's available is going to come and try to turn me. But if I put more emphasis on what I know, that's a discipline for me to do what? To make myself open minded in spirit to learn. Right. To acquire discipline. To require to acquire and, and to execute commitment. Because I'll tell you what, I could believe everything based off of my feelings of the moment. And that none of that will be in a measure of truth. That's true. And, and so we've been having a call and a request for our tribe to become more disciplined. And... Generally, people don't like, especially in today's world, because convenience has been has become so convenient. <laughs> you know, yeah. the easiest path, the soul, is the only thing that you look for, and I think that that's a, de a definitely a poison pill to destruction. How many of us? Lance, just think about it. How many of us do anything that requires, that, that is strenuous anymore and hard? Lance, when you grew up, I want to just take your profession as a journalist. When you growing up, and when we grew up, you would have to spend time away from what you wanted to do and from what was convenient for you to learn something more. It required a commitment and discipline. And so that meant that you had to go research something. It wasn't something called the information superhighway, which is really the information to, to, uh, uh, of super destruction. It really is. It gets you to a point where this is the thing. The sweet taste of poison will only get you too far before the poison takes over for the death to kick in. That's the fucking Internet and social media. Yes. The sweet taste will get you so far to get to the death. And I'm sorry about for those of you that are offended by my language. I don't care. We are in a totally different time now. That's right. That's right. We're in a totally different time. Let it flow. There's a totally different urgency. And so yes. the convenience of uh, the, the, the poison of convenience, I will tell you this. That is something that comes from around the devil's neck. What I mean by that? That's a gem. Taken from the devil's neck and placed forward to destroy all that will consume it. Mm -hmm. And so we have to start to get away from what's convenient and get back to what requires our discipline and our work and our commitment. And that's important because of this. This system of, of subjugation only works in a state of ignorance. I'll give you an example of that. Lance. Mm -hmm. One second. I'll give you an example. Yeah, sure. Take your time, brother. This is life word tonight. 
And as we progress in this conversation, it's going to get more intense and it's going to get more nutritious to the soul for those who crave this because you're not going to hear too much of what Brother Dave is sharing elsewhere. People talk, but he has the background and experience. If you know his background, and you know that he knows what he's talking about. And like a master chef who could take the same ingredients that someone else has given, but can rip it up in a certain way that makes it five star ready in a restaurant. This is what you're getting. So, yes, brother. So I had some Monopoly money, some Monopoly <laughs> from the game of yes. Monopoly in my pocket, yes. in, in my bag, and I couldn't find it. But same purpose. Here's where convenience gets you. Convenience gets you what you call this money. What you call this money. Where you will kill, destroy, lie, maim, kill yourself for this And you will call this, oops, and you will call this, eh, eh, that's nothing. What is that? Look at how that reflects the light. What frequency does that reflect? What frequency does, does this reflect? Look at the light. light look, look at look at there looks like the sun doesn't it doesn't it, yes, it look like this because it is the sun this mm -hmm. is the most direct representation of the sun the sun you know what we say don't want that give me that lie give me that lie and this has been conveniently pushed on us yeah. to make us think that it has some relative eternal sacrificable commitment that we should make to it. Mm -hmm. This will make you rich. This is what makes you wealthy. And when you're rich, you're one economic mistake from going broke. And when you're wealthy, you can never go broke. Because wealth, when you, uh, when you establish wealth, there's a commitment and a discipline to it. You understand, here's the, you know price, you know value. This is valuable. This is priceless. Yes. This only has relevance until somebody that borrows from you doesn't pay. Let me ask you something. I I made the mistake of was slow of paying a friend one time. You know how mad that friend was what was at me? It was almost you can't you, you lose a friendship think about when you lose when someone when when you lose confidence when you don't fulfill an obligation right i'll put it this way ladies how many times have men lied to you or broke a promise to you? And I would say, fellas, how many times has a woman lied and broke a promise to you? It changes everything. Mm -hmm. Thing about it is that the great creator never lied or broke a promise. 
it's still money to this day and it will be money tomorrow it will be money yesterday it will be money because it is and i'm saying that because we are now starting to move into a different in a different paradigm where the lender has defaulted on the promise and when when someone when a lender defaults on a promise people get pissed people lose jobs they lose lives they lose they lose plans they lose retirements they lose savings they lose investment they lose families they lose relationships. They lose themselves. And the only thing we really had to do the whole time was what was written in the great in, in, in the Judeo-Christian Bible at the temptation. The temptation of this. If you will just bow down to me, I'll give you the world that I created. And what was said? Man can't live on bread alone. What's the slang for this? Bread. You think that's a coincidence? <laughs> no. Man can't live on bread alone, but everything that proceeds from the father's mouth. Let me show you this. See if I can get it. Let me show you this. Why is that so important? What's the first thing that was in a Judeo-Christian Bible that was perceived from the great creator's mouth? Let there be light. Okay. Show you one more time. Let there be light. You see that light? You know what that meant? It's really translated into let there be silver. Because this is light. Right. The sun. No sun, no silver, no sun. No sun, no silver. And I remember one time someone never even heard of silver, didn't know anything about it, challenged what I was saying, Lance, about silver. I'm going <laughs> to ask you, what the hell do you do for a living? Do I come to your job or what you do for a living and challenge what you said because I don't know anything about your job. How does that sound? How would I sound going to a dentist and telling the dentist, <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about? <laughs> How would you go to an anesthesiologist and say, you don't know what you're talking about just because <laughs> It did. It was foreign to me compared to the devil's teaching that I've been taught. How are you standing up for devil's teachings? How are you standing up for devil teaching? And I'm going to get to the point of this whole thing is this. If you don't think anew, you're going to continue to do and you're going to get you're going to get in a situation where you're not going to be able to figure it out and you're going to be stuck here for the rest of your life and your children and your generation's lives too. Mm -hmm. You have to think different. You have to go back to what's true and what's, 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 what is the overall, your birthright. Not your, your freedom. I don't care about freedom, Lance. Freedom is something that's written by man. That's the letter of the law. I care about the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law gives you liberty and gives you prosperity, but you have to, you're born with it, but you have to maintain it. Right. You know what's so hard about maintaining it? It won't come conveniently. It's never convenient. Is never for the lazy. Is never for the dumb. What's the dumb? Those that can't hear, see, or feel, or be in tune. And I'm saying that because 
we are coming to the, to the slaughter of the dumb period. Now, why do I say that? Because there's something, if you ever hear multipolar, the multipolar world, what is the multipolar world? Whenever you hear multipolar, that means that the rest of the world is going to bring the overall charges of abatement and charges of, of aggression against the United States. And when they do that, you may say as a U.S. citizen, yeah, they deserve it, which they do. But do you really realize what that means? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what that means. When they bring these charges and they collectively go to war and defeat the United States, because this war that is going to be fought is economically first. It's an economic war first. Then it will go into a kinetic war. The kinetic war is where you have militaries. It's not going to be like our grandfathers. The kinetic wars are, are, are useful for propaganda. Oh, but they're still used. But today's wars are fought economically and cyberly. And what's going to happen is that they're setting those that have been slowfully and egregiously benefiting from this system that didn't do really anything about it and continue to, to, to perpetuate from it and allow it to happen and just say, oh, well, it's convenient for me or I'm, I'm not going. And who is that? That's every single one of us. Let me tell you why is every single one of us. Let me get to this point. I hope you understand and get it. How many of you have, have ever traveled overseas? I want you to think about it. If you traveled overseas with the U.S. dollar, you were able to have a standard of living and a quality of life that you really didn't deserve at someone else's expense. Your hotel people, the restaurant people. They were making they were there to provide your overall convenience of conference because you came with U.S. dollars that had purchasing power. How long do you think that enslavement? Is going to last, you know, it's one of the things that this system teaches us, Lance, it teaches us that. Nobody wants to be a slave, but everybody damn sure wants to have one. <laughs> right. right. So we have been we built, we lit, we accepted and we conveniently complied with a system that was systematically giving worthless and getting priceless. When that person at that hotel or that resort or that vacation spot that you went to they gave their energy so that you can have a conveniently comfortable time and they weren't paid anything for it really wow what resentment do you think that they're going to have when they see your US dollar gluttonous ass Coming there to live a lifestyle that you don't, that's not earned. Not really, not really your fault. No, because you were born into it, but they still see you that way. And when they see you that way, why do they see you this way? Because every deal you make with the devil, you lose your soul. Because you made a, de a deal with the devil. He was on the devil's payroll. When you're on the devil's payroll, you're going to get a, a wage of endowment. That's what this is, a wage of endowment. You'll never get wealthy. You'll get rich. Because you can't get wealthy until you exchange this for this, something that has intrinsic value. 
And I was telling you all, while they're still accepting this for this, the most effective and efficient way for you to take back your birthright is to get back on what? Get off of the devil's payroll and get back on the ecosystem of the promise to prosperity. And why is that so important now? Because the rest of the world is ready for a cyclical change. A cyclical, what's cyclical? It's, it's circular. That means that it's this country now, that country now, so today is the United States. Tomorrow it'll be China. The next month it will be a country in Africa. The next, I mean, the next year, uh, millenniums after that or generations after that, it'll be another. But the same shit will be going over and over again. But just because they have a cyclical system doesn't mean that you have to be spinning on that carousel of death. Right. <laughs> you can get off and say, I'm not playing this game. I'm not playing this game. And I'm saying that because of this. The whole world is now lining up to drop the U.S. dollar. I don't know how long we've been on this with, with, with Lance and mm. warning and telling people that the very dollar that you have, it was go back, go back to, go back to, I don't know how long ago it was, H.R. 5404. Lance has that in, in, in the archives. We, we, we're not just talking about, we're not, we're not people come lately. We saw this way before. And I want to tell you that I never like to stay where we are. I always like to walk on the horizon. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know that the banks are failing and all of this stuff. That's that's yesterday's news. You better be on the horizon of what's up next. So let me tell you what's up next. What's up next is that everybody that has real money is going to be exceedingly wealthy. And they're going to be able to dictate to the economy that the economy is going to have to be beholden to their will. You say that again. When you live like a God, I, I, how many times you hear in our community, sisters and brothers calling each other kings and queens? All the time. All the time. I ask you, how can you be a king or a queen without any assets? How can you be a king or queen without money? And most people say, well, I don't need money. That's because you don't know what money is. Money sustains life. Who, who don't need that? But we come into this overall psychological thinking that the world is what I think. Well, I hate to say it. You just got here. <laughs> you just got here you didn't build anything you fell into what was built you were given a body to what was built so you should be adding to Noah's Ark pick up a hammer because the storm is really coming oh, it's yeah. here so I want to talk about what's on the horizon. What's on the horizon is that you can change and you can reacquire the prosperity that has been lost. Why do you think mainstream media and the overall agenda of the direction of multipolar world, why do you think that the continent of Africa is so instrumental in that? Because we're moving into an age of prosperity loss being regained. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about, I'm not tripping on what was yesterday so much. Because you need to prepare yourself for, for 
what's coming. And if you don't see it coming, then you're not going to know what to do before it comes. And I always think that you should be preparing before it comes. How many times, Lance, you was in Florida. Mm -hmm. How well do people do when they prepare for the hurricane, when the winds, when, when they went out to get prepared for the hurricane, when the winds was 80, 90 miles per hour, 100 miles per hour outside? How well did they do? When the wind were already taking effect they didn't do too well it was those who came out of the comfort zone and were prepared even before the word came that, that they got busy and took action but when you're trying to nail up boards and the winds are blowing and things are happening it's too late really you know it's too late Good. and that's that's the mentality that is that is actually taught to the everyday person because they get taught that everything is they get a sense of on we and, and a normalcy bias that everything is going to be okay and that's never the case right it, they thought everything was going to be okay before the slave trade that didn't go okay <laughs> did it didn't, not at all. didn't go okay it is not going to be okay and like lance said if the winds is blowing you trying to board up stuff you going down the street that wind is taking you and that board right. down the street. That's right. <laughs> so you prepare for it when the sun is shining. Let me get you all prepared while the sun is shining. If you are positioned correctly, you are going to be able to regain generational prosperity that's lost by what you do now. Let me tell you what they're really what they're doing. It's 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 a genius. It's a very these people will kill you with experience because this ain't their first time doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back, brother. I'm gonna hit the restroom and we get some water. Yep. I'll be right back. Okay, keep talking. So, let me tell you what one of the things I would like for you to 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 really take notice to. If you notice, they just had some bank runs in the United States. So what is a bank run? Bank run is when people run to the bank and they try to get their cash out. Some people call it their money. They're wrong because it's not money, it's, cash. It's, it's currency. So they run to the bank to get their cash out. And then they say, I need my cash, I need my cash. It's a really smart plan because think about it. What are they doing? They are reestablishing and they are fundamentally cementing in you that cash is king. So you're going to run to get this and hold it. You know, hold this cash. Give me my give me my money. Why are they doing that? Let me tell you why they're doing it. They're doing it because the rest of the world is dropping it. And they got to have a buyer of last resort to hold it. And who is the buyer of last resort? The common person. Commonly referred to as citizens and taxpayers. So they are causing the citizens and taxpayers to have a false sense of security with cash. And that is how they're getting everybody to pick up what the rest of the world is dropping. Because if the citizens and taxpayers don't pick up that cash, guess where that cash goes? It returns to sender. And the sender doesn't want it because the sender knows it's worthless. What does the sender of cash do with cash that comes back to them? to them. After so many years, they burn cash. Think about that. Why do they burn cash? Because it's trash. You burn trash. They're not right. burning it. They're not burning it for heat. They're not burning it to cook. They're not burning it, you know, 
to to cause a uh, 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 to to create steam. They're burning it because it's going back to its true intrinsic value of worthless. And we are kill, destroy, and maim ourselves, our loved ones, and people that we don't know for something that's going to be burned anyhow. That's trash. Lance, how? Mm -hmm. How many times, I want you to really think about this, everybody. How many times have you ever taken the trash out? How many people do you know that takes the trash out? Everybody. Right. If you take, if you take the trash out, you never bring the trash back in. Never. But they taught us to bring the trash back in. They're going to burn it as trash. You know what? And, and you know what, how how Hollywood, I don't like to use movies, but I hate using mm -hmm. movies, but I'm going to use it in this example. I don't know what yeah. movie it was, uh, which series of uh, of Batman with the Joker or what was the Joker's movie. There was a, there was a, a scene in, in one of those those movies with the Joker. Who was the dude that died after uh, uh, having played the Joker? I know, but his name slips me. Yeah, I know that guy. Talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's an actor, aka a professional liar, right? So, that's all. Yeah, yeah, he. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's an actor, which is nothing more than a professional liar. <laughs> right. Just an actor. Right. So there was a scene where he's ledger. There's a bunch of cash. Heath Ledger, yes. There's a bunch of cash. And he took some gasoline and threw gasoline all on cat all on cash. Mm -hmm. Then he lit it and he threw, I think a match or a lighter, he threw it on the cash and it all went up in smoke. And you know what he said? Think something to that effect. He says, I don't care about your money. Very powerful statement. Yeah. Do you do you know the symbolism behind that? One, you don't burn money. You burn trash and cash becomes trash. I don't <laughs> care about your trash. I care about your energy and capabilities. That's money. It's the real money. That's real money. So whatever you do really well, if you cook really well, that's your money. How could you say I don't need money? If you didn't need money, then the sun wouldn't shine and you wouldn't be here. There's such a fallacy. But they teach us that because they teach us to know the price of everything, but know the value of nothing. Because you know how they trick us is that they never put a price on intrinsic value things because they hide them from you. Right. right. They only put prices on consumer goods and push that in front of you. Yes, they put a price on certain things, but they hide that from you. Whatever they, whatever they propagandize or they, they advertise or they push out in front of you in an in a, in a untruthful way is because it keeps you as a consumer. Rockefeller said it this way. I don't want a nation of thinkers. I want a nation of workers. Mm -hmm. A.K.A. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody claiming their birthright. I want them surrendering it to me as my slaves. So. With these bank runs, that's what they're really pushing for you to worship cash. And the word worship means to work for. You know what I work for? Money. Sustainability. Because I value 
my energy. You should always exchange money for more money. The more you do that, the wealthier you become. Whenever you exchange money for currency, the more disenfranchised you will become. That's right. That's right. There's no. Yeah, go ahead. I've always said it before, and people thought I was crazy when I would say this, that you're going to work and bringing your true life force. You're giving them your life force and you're taking back the paper. That's a dead manifestation of your good life force that you gave. So they are ripping you off. They are raping you and you're coming back with nothing because now at the end of the day, they can adjust how valuable that dead paper is and rip you off and you have nothing to say about it. But you put your hard work, your wealth, your mentality, your skills, like you said, if you're a great cook, whatever it is that you do good, they get the best of it and you get nothing. But None then, of it. Yeah. It, your talents and abilities don't perpetuate your prosperity. I'm say that again. Your talents and your abilities don't perpetuate and don't perpetuate and proceed and, and actually momentum momentumize your wealth. It's right. stolen as a fruit of harvest by them. They harvest it. This is exactly what Lance is talking about. They harvest it. And here's where we are. The horizon is this. Those that have been saving in real money and collecting real money, the world is about to change. Here's how it's going to change. They're going to come out with new pieces of paper. And they're going to be backed by money. Money. Going to be backed by money. And when they're backed by money, is the some of the monies that I believe that they're going to put in that overall basket or bushel basket of things that are are are, are collateral or are, are can be used as collateral to create debt. This is debt. How do you create debt? Right now, they create debt off of a promise. Ooh, give me debt. I pro this is how it is. Ooh, give me debt. I promise to pay you. I'm going to say that again. Ladies, how many times have guys broken a promise to you? Gentlemen, how many times has women, fellas, how many times have a woman broken a promise to you? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to bet your whole life on, ooh, give me debt, I promise to pay you? Mm -hmm. That's a fool's exchange. Here's why. <laughs> the lender then has a debt problem, not the borrower. Because the borrower, if the borrower reneges on the promise, guess who's at loss? The lender. The lender has got a debt problem. So what they're going to do is that they're going to have debt have to be collateralized. And you would do the same thing. So if you didn't pay someone back, what's the next time you're going to say to them if they ever come to borrow from you? Oh. I did pay the, pay the person back, so don't don't think that I didn't. <laughs> what what are you going to require? Some collateral. Why do you have collateral? Because a promise isn't sufficient enough. A commitment to loss by the lender is. One more time, the commitment of a loss. To the lender is, I mean, to, to the borrower is. So mm -hmm. if the borrower is is going to lose something for making for lending more than they can service or pay back. The loss is never what the lenders now the loss moves to the borrower. So now what does that mean for you? What does that mean? If you have a collateralized inst instrument, that means that you'll be able to create debt. You're going to be a financial institution. And if you're a financial institution, what can you do? You can harvest more money than you otherwise would be able to do as a borrower. Mm -hmm. So what does that make you? 
is going to give you an opportunity to become wealthy, exceedingly wealthy. So the key is not where the collapse, everybody that had their, their bank bail-ins or cash in the bank that they lost, that's, that's your fault. The only thing I keep in the bank is what I'm willing for them to steal. And I make no <laughs> excuses for that. Right, right. And I've always done that. The only thing I keep in the bank is what I'm willing for them to steal because it's not mine right. or deprive me of. It's not mine, it's theirs. You got to know how this thing works. And think about it, Lance. They said when SVB and First Citizen Bank went down, but well, wait a minute. Wasn't that FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, that was their responsibility to make those depositors whole, right? That's right. It's just two banks, right? right? Two or three banks. It was, it was, it was silver, um, oh shoot, silver. Oh, I forgot what it was. Silver. Silicone. Yeah, Silicone Valley Bank, SVB was one. Silvergate, I think it was Silvergate. Yeah, Silvergate, Silicone Valley Bank, uh, Signature, and First Citizen, right? It's only four banks. What did they just tell you? And when the first bank, SVB, went down, SVB went down, they told you what was up. Why? Because they said first on Saturday, Sunday, there was not going to be any bailouts. On Sunday, on Monday morning, Bush was on TV saying that the federal government is going to insure the banking. Wait a minute. You mean FDIC couldn't handle one or two damn banks going under? Let's see. <laughs> you mean the FDIC couldn't do that by themselves? Why did the federal government have to get in? Because the shit is bigger than just one or two banks. It's all of them. And I don't know if we really understand how financing works and debt works. If you take everything, if you take one, this is roughly about, probably about 33 or 32 admitted trillion dollars in debt that citizens and taxpayers are in. Notice I didn't say the government because the government is not in debt. Just the citizens and taxpayers are. It's called the national debt citizens and taxpayers, not the government. If you line these up one after another, you do one trillion dollars, guess what happens? You go further than with Lance Armstrong. Uh, uh, what was what's the other dudes that went to the moon? Uh, uh, Lance Arms. Armstrong. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, no, Lance Armstrong. That's the damn biker. Uh, uh, Neil biker. Armstrong. Yeah. Neil Armstrong, who, who was the other other dudes? Um, can't remember right now. Uh, you go further Brit than them. Yeah. Who was it, Lance? Virgil Grissom. Yeah, Grissom. You go further than where they went on the moon. How about this? You go past the sun. For $1 trillion? You line these up? You would have a path from Earth past the sun. Mm. That's one T. That's one T. Yeah. So now you see why when one bank goes down, the federal, the FDIC can't service what did they really tell you they really told you that this is an economic war that they're losing now mm -hmm. and this is why they targeted certain european banks such as credit swiss because that was heavily invested by saudi arabia what did saudi arabia do earlier this year a couple of months ago at davos they admitted that they're dropping the u.s petrodollars i mean the petrodollar standard Mm -hmm. So the, the finance minister of Saudi Arabia, right at Davos, said it. You know what that means? Remember when I talked about that great quality of life and standard of living you have as a U.S. citizen to be able to go to a foreign country and to live beyond your overall means? Oh, you was living good when you went to a foreign country with U.S. dollars. You was able to what? I heard people say it. We are over, over here living like kings and queens. Yeah. Hmm. 
You don't see a problem with that? If you're living like kings and queens, there is no kings and queen unless there's a peasant right. that's upholding a king and a queen. You think that that's going to be cool with people forever? No. So, so what's so crazy about it is that these banks go under start to go under and once one goes under the whole system but really what this is all about this is a concerted and a planned attack against russia china india south africa the BRIC nations brazil russia india china south africa particularly russia in the, in 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 um china and south africa particularly those nations and now Saudi Arabia and now Iran wants in on it. Okay. What the heck does that mean? That means that the majority and the power brokers of OPEC that sell the critical commodity of oil for every governmental economy to work is no longer using U.S. dollars to sell it. What does that mean? I'll tell you what that means. Lance, I want you to think about if you're a millionaire and you live like a millionaire, your ass is broke. Because you're a millionaire living up to your earnings potential. You're not living below your means. Right? right. right. If you are a millionaire but you live like a thousand air or a hundred air or a dollar air, you're good. Right, right. But if you're a millionaire and you live like a millionaire, your ass is broke. Like I always say, it's not what you make, it's what you don't spend. Yeah. Because you can be a person who makes $100,000 a year and be out of debt by living below your means. But you can be that millionaire trying to live this thing that you see on TV and they're on a down trajectory. And that person who makes that $100,000 would have lived a better life, more balance, and actually have accumulated more if they do it yep. right. Yep. Yep. Let's take this basic and elementary for everybody. Let's speak to everybody on an elementary level. One plus one is two, right? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. One plus one is two. One minus one is zero, right? One minus one is zero. So if you are one, if you have one million dollars, and you have to minus that one million dollars out by one million dollars in debt and li and liabilities, that's going to eat up all of that one million dollars. What do you have? Zero. That's right. That's why if you're a millionaire and you live like a millionaire, you're broke. Right. You're zero. There's nothing extra. And this system teaches us to be consumers past zero. It teaches us to be consumers. You make one million, but you got four million dollars in debt. Ten million dollars in debt. Twenty million dollars in debt. Then you make a half a million dollars that next year. Then And then everybody says, how are you broke when you make a, a half million dollars? Because your overall obligations are way beyond that million. That's right. That's right. Broke. So they put us in a position of being consumer broke. That is going to cause you. You remember how you lived so well before going to other countries? All of the countries and the people that are saving now, guess who's going to be their servants and is going to be providing that, that quality of life and standard of living? That's right. You and I. That's right. It's going to switch. Guess who's going to be working? This, the, 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 you saw how Foxconn was in all these other countries. We told y'all that when Foxconn came to the United States, that, that was a big sign that they're going to bring the sweatshops here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So now think about this. I want you to think about it. Do you make more than your great than your grandparents and your great grandparents and your great grandparents? Most people will say, yes, they do. Yes, you make more numbers. But the cash you're paying, getting paid in has less purchasing power than the cash that they were paid in. Do you realize that you have to work nine and a half more hours today just to have the same standard of living that your grand that your great grandparents had? If you go back three generations, then you need 36 more hours of work. Oh, yeah, you got more cash. See, this is where they trick you thinking that cash is king. Cream, cash rules everything around me. No, cash rules you. <laughs> right. You have to start ruling cash. You have to start ruling debt. And most people think because you make more cash that you are. No, you are far. You are far, far for far, far more disenfranchised economically. How about this, Lance? Mm -hmm. Some of the slaves of the plantation era. You are below them. Yeah. It's a wonderful right. trick. It's a wonderful trick. I give you worthless pieces of paper and make your ass think that pieces of paper out of a notebook is valuable. When I get the valuable stuff out of the mines in the ground that you don't even want to look at. So there's no competition. Wow. There's no competition. You're competing wow. for monopoly while they're competing to monopolize. I like that. So what you should be doing, I'm going to end it out on here. What should you be doing? It's really easy. The economic system and the bankers are doing you the greatest favor ever. Yes, they do do favors, but it's, it's, it's not that they really care about you. It's that they have to do it in order for them. It's kind of like the thief has to leave the door open in order for them to steal the stuff and get out. Right? <laughs> You got to kind of break in, right? The thief has to break in. So here's the break in. They're allowing you to acquire real money for pennies on the dollar. I appreciate that right now you could acquire silver for $30. A year from now, I doubt that you'll be able to do it. Oh, not acquire it for thirty dollars i don't think you'll be able to acquire it for anything that you have in your bank account even if it's a million dollars because that's the natural progression so now if you start to position yourself now as everything we go through this overall economic collapse this global economic collapse is going to turn and blame the u.s and the u.s is going to be the most put it to you this way we're going to have an opportunity for reverse gentrification. I never got mad at gentrification from this standpoint because I understood what they were doing. I understood what they were doing. And what they were doing was that they were acquiring an asset for pennies on the dollar. So in re we're about to go through reverse gentrification. This is my thinking. Let them do that if you can't stop it. And the reason why we couldn't stop it is because our people have been so economically disenfranchised, they sold a liability while they gave up an asset. The house was the liability. So somebody came and said, I'll buy your house for $200,000, while the land that the house was sitting on was worth $7 million. So they really sold a $7 million asset for $200,000. See how gentrification works? So wow. what's reverse gentrification? That land now, once they develop it, 
it becomes not $7 million, now it's $10 million. There's going to be $10 million and they're not going to be able to afford the note on that. And they're going to have to go into receivership and sell it for pennies on the dollars. If you position correctly and know what you're doing, you'll be able to have what? The pennies necessary to acquire the underlying asset. Reverse gingivacation. So my thing is that if they're going to get it, cool. Let them get it. Let them develop it. And then I'm going to come in and my clients are going to come in and buy that for pennies on the dollar. See, the key to a profit is not where you exit. It's where you enter. So when they develop it, they put all of these nice restaurants. They put all uh, there's all this other nice stuff and they develop the airports and they develop all of this. That's the development. But guess what? They're not going to be able to hold on to that. And they're going to have to sell that for pennies on the dollars. You better have the pennies and able to be, to be able to acquire it. Now you get back. This is how I was saying to you, the prosperity. We have a chance to get the prosperity that was lost back. It's easy. It's basic finance. It's basic economic truths. It's basic money knowledge. Knowing the difference between currency and money. This ain't money. Right. Anything that the great creator God Almighty makes is money. Anything man makes is a currency imitating money. Right. Understood. And I'm going to leave it at this. How you know this is true? Go to a dictionary, particularly go to the Congressional Constitutional Dictionary. And this is what they'll say. A bill of credit, this is a bill of credit, need not be money. But money is a bill of credit. Did you see how they tongue twisted that one? <laughs> a bill of credit need not be money, meaning that this ain't money. But money is money is a bill of credit. What does that mean? This is both credit and you can make credit out of it. You can establish credit with it. You can create credit with it. You can mm -hmm. adjudicate credit with it, with it. You can make yourself a financial institution with it if you have the asset that it can both produce credit and is still money while it's doing it. Not this. Right. So, Lance, I hope we are going into a war the war is economic, it's economical wars. It's it's a it's a cyber cyber war. Get ready for all of that. Make sure everyone needs to have at least three to four months of, of real money. That being food, water, shelter, protection, the precious metals. You know, don't fool. Don't get fooled by these bank runs where you run into the bank to get your cash. That stuff is trash. Either the Federal Reserve is going to burn it or either way you're going to burn it. I would rather you let them burn it. Send it back. To, let it return to sender. Transfer your currency into money and you'll be fine. You'll be on the horizon. You won't be at the moment. That's where you should be past the moment. So, Lance. Thank you, bro. Thank you, As brother. always, I hope, you know, the audience learned something and we we are really in. I, I, I'm, let me tell you this. It's going to be so valuable. Yeah. Everybody should keep a journal right now. Because what you're going to be doing is memorializing. This once in a lifetime. Events, because we're going to go through an economic 
uh, a collapse that has never been seen before. We are totally in uncharted charted waters. No, it's not like the Great Depression. No, it's not like the Great Reset. No, it's not like the uh, the 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 oil uh, uh, crisis of the 70s. No, it's not like the 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 savings and loan bond situation of 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 um of uh, uh, the 80s. No, it's not like anything. It's, it's not like any of those before. It's all of those and more. It's a complete global collapse of what? Yeah. Confidence. And when that happens, that means there's great opportunity. You just need to be in, in on the side that has been proven throughout human history as being money. Very few things have. Land is a form of money, but it's not the most perfect form of money. Oil is a form of money, but it's not the most perfect form of money. You're a, a form of money. You are a, a, a form of perfect money, just like the precious metals. So that's where your interest and that's where your energy should be. So Lance, brother, thank you for you know, putting up oh. with my schedule yeah. and and everything else if if it's it's just i i just so appreciate you we got so much more to do uh lance let's get the together uh this week i'm pretty tired but next week um i need just, to to look at some of the stuff that we need to do uh, and i want right. to do that first thing monday if that's okay right. monday or tuesday whatever is good for you um call me last yes, minute sir. yeah you can yep. call me that same thing and say let's go on tonight if, let's if go it's to the lab. Lab. Anything. It doesn't have to be where you give this window of time. I'm here. I'm always yep. ready. Call. Even if it's two hours ahead of time, we're going to go on. I'm ready yep. on time. Yep. Always so, here, brother. You. Man, I, I appreciate you. So, yeah, uh, Lance, let's let's get a uh, move on it. I definitely need your help and your direction um, in, yes. in, a lot of, in a lot of different things, and I, I'm looking forward to it. So, much love, much respect. There's never goodbye. As always, we'll see you later. Uh, Lance, yes. but definitely uh, hit me up. Um, th let's talk on Sunday to, pr to prep okay. for the coming week, okay? Okay, thank you so much, brother. All right, my brother. Thank you. Peace, peace. Peace, love, brother. All right. I know we all learned something, and if we did already know it, um, it refreshed our memory. Next week when we come on, we'll talk more about the current events that are in the world that we need to know about and how to deal with. But like he said, it's economic, it's cyber. And that can still have a big effect on our lives, big time, whether we know it or not. I just want you all to notice how YouTube and certain social media platforms have been dropping for an hour or two or more. These are all test runs. What's been happening in the world that caused us to wear a mask? These are all test runs to see how we're going to react. These things that are happening with the money, we're going to catch a lot of us who feel so secure with our pants down. While not saying that everybody has to go to Africa or some other country, but imagine if that pension that we depend on when we retire doesn't come in anymore. Imagine that. Imagine that. Do we still have a mortgage? Do we still have to pay rent? How are we living? We're going to get food that the supermarkets don't have it. It's not a matter of fear mongering because people say, oh, well, you know, the Lord is going to take care of me. The main thing is that we need to take care of ourselves. These artificial systems that we depend on that are not real, how can we be more self sufficient? If there's no food and we're packed up on top of each other in these crowded cities, People will come to delete you. We can't say the K-I-L word anymore that much. For the food in your refrigerator. And once that food is gone and there's no cash or there's nothing to borrow with, and if you have a mortgage, well, it, it could be a disaster before a bomb is dropped. So with all the fear mongering going on, which we should still pay Attention to. We're looking for the bomb, but what about not being able to get money out the bank? 
What happens if we don't get a pension anymore? Social security, paycheck. Look over here in Ghana. The exchange rate with the American dollar changes almost daily. Last week or two, it was one American dollar for 10 CDs. I checked it again. I think it was yesterday on the show. And it was uh, 1 to 12. That doesn't affect us in America or Americans who live here because we always get what it is. Okay, now it was 12. It's 11.85 right now. So, again, we're going to get what we get regardless. But what happens if it's cut at the root? What happens if what we're used to changes there? You see Putin and the Chinese president and all of these nations are getting, to, getting together on the opposite side, the BRICS station as opposed to NATO. All they got to do is pull the rug from under our feet on a, uh, on a financial level, and we're right there. They're already doing it. They're not acknowledging the dollar. So we got to come out of that. And so for everyone who wants to contact Brother Dave throughout the whole show, on the bottom right here, scrolling across, this is information. His email at info at prosperitymint.com, info at prosperitymint.com. And um, you can go to the site, Prosperity Mint. And do I have his phone number going across? I'm not sure. But I have it. And um, I can reach him directly if it's really that much of a dire need. But yeah, let's not succumb to, to the, to the fee mongering. Let's prepare in a wise way and eliminate debts. We can't get caught up into the things we caught up to got to get out of our comfort zone we got to get out of our comfort zone and when i came here to ghana yes we can romanticize other land and all of that which is beautiful and i have but you have some of the same elements and proportions similar in the same way you have in america here you don't have racism you have classism and just like brother dave said when you come to another country and you can say that you're living like a king. There has to be a peasant for the king to be a king, and there will be resentment. Okay? So for me, Mr. Scurve, it was also a financial move to immediately eliminate a mortgage, immediately eliminate property taxes, which can you know, cause you to lose your home, and to be able to have our supermarket in our backyard which is a little bit bigger than most backyards. And Mrs. Skirt gets to work every single day from dawn to get up to property until the sun down five days a week at least. Other than that, we're buying seeds, plants, different things, but she's a full-time worker because value of her life force used for us is better than going and using your life force for that piece of paper that somebody can cut off or adjust the value of. Because my experience, when I pick a mango off of the tree, it never called me back to say, hey, you need to pay me. The payment for that mango came in the work that it took to cultivate the soil, to have the wisdom to know how to grow this thing. It's better than just sticking a seed in the soil. So she has all of that knowledge. I don't have the knowledge that she has. I learn from her every single day. I learn from mixed genre phase. We're going to have a show at some point this week, whenever she's free. And the wisdom that she brings to share amongst ourselves is the real, true money that has a true worth as opposed to pieces of paper that can be played with by the oppressor. Okay, we'll give you this amount of money, but we're going to drop the value of it. And whether you are into the nation of Islam or the honor of Elijah Muhammad, there was a book. He, there was a book that he had, "The Fall of America," and he said many times that there's going to come a time in America where money is going to be on the ground, and we'll won't even bend down to pick it up because it'll be worthless. 
And I can see that we're very, very close to that. And again, remember, when 9 -1 -1 happened, we felt so secure because we had the best military. It's not always about the military war. And we know that that was an inside job. I understand that. But still, for America to turn on their own people and do such a thing, to guide us in a certain way. And at that time, it was written and already planned that Canada, Mexico, and the United States are going to be one country, and the currency that they will have at that time will be called the Amero. And most people don't even know that. We're already into, on the precipice of the social credit system. Joe Biden signed that one in March last year. But how many people know that? We don't know that. You see, because they do things long term. And they corral us over here and over here like the sheep that many of us are without the knowledge of knowing what they're doing. It was Vladimir Putin that I think uh, leaved $20 billion in debt here in Africa. I got to get the details of that story, but this happened a couple of days ago. But the American press and media is not that you know that. But yet and still Kamala Harris came over here to Ghana. She might still be here. And she went to the slave dungeons and cried. I said, oh, she's black this week. Last week, she's South Asian. She has a Jamaican father, black Jamaican father, but that's all she'll say is he's Jamaican. The, 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 the nationality. What's his race? See? She cares so much about the trans situation and the LGBTQ situation here in Ghana, but does she give a damn about those who shot and killed in America by the police, the wayward police, because I have some good police officers. See, see how hypocritical it is that they don't care for you as a black man or woman in America, but to, for them to care about you, you have to be LGBTQ. And so many of our Black brothers and sisters who happen to be part of the rainbow community feel that when they move away from that and jump into these groups and protest for the rights of the rainbow group, that they're no longer black or have to deal with being black, African, melanated, copper color, whatever you want to call it, in America, that they're exempt now from the nigger treatment. You can't change yourself. And when you Join on to these groups thinking you're something other than you are what you are. What you do in the bedroom is your own business. Nobody's going into your bedroom with hidden cameras saying you can't do the things you do. But why does it have to be such a parade? And you're so happy now because you think you're not black anymore. Until you get a gay or lesbian nigga wake up call like Paul Mooney used to say. We're the most split up race on the planet. We have no unity and no overlap overall. There are a few, like those here in the chat room. But other than that, we are sliced and diced and we see each other this way. I'm a Catholic. I don't have to worry about uh, 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 Methodist uh, uh, or, or Baptist ideologies. I'm Catholic. And the Pope is changing things Whatever Pope is up there is changing what's good or what's right or what's proper in the eyes of their God. I look out over these mountains that I'll be living in soon, up in the sky. And like I said, we happen to purchase property in the highest point of this part of Ghana, the highest point. So if all of Ghana floods, we'll be the last one holding on. But they don't see the beauty of this land. They're jockeying for position. And that's why Kamala Harris came over here with $100 million for Ghana. I forgot what the, it was to keep conflict from happening. And, and, and what conflict, what do you anticipate? Why are you paying off Ghana ahead of time? What do you anticipate happening soon? Right? 
So you can say, oh, we did this for them and we did that for them. But there's atrazine in all of the fertilizer that they sell in the markets here. Atrazine. That chemical that turns male frogs into female frogs. And if we're fertilizing our plants with it long term, what is it going to do? I'm not saying it's going to turn us into a Frankenstein monster as a male. But it's one step toward effeminizing a nation, the youngest, the youngest nations on the planet, black men and black women, fertile. I bumped into a woman in public the other day. Well, about two months ago, and she came back and told me she was pregnant. No, I'm just joking with y'all. But the women here are fertile and childbirth is <laughs> from the ones I've talked to. They're like, oh, I love childbirth. My baby always comes out so easy. They don't like that especially when your numbers are dying and you won't be on this earth quite soon. I'll probably live to see that. 20, 30 years, possibly. Who knows? But it's coming. And they know it's coming. But here we are on Instagram, twerking, doing this, doing that, arguing with each other. Black men saying they don't need the black man. The black man saying they're going to get the passport and go somewhere else and go in a different race. And bragging about it. Practically going, nah, 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 We are sick by the things that they put out for us. Like I said, it's like those little things that they drop out for roaches, and the roach eats it and goes back to the nest and kills off all the other roaches in the nest. Not just physically, but yes, physically too. Methamphetamine, the crack that's still out there, and the drugs. The people who are selling it and killing the other dealers to get more money, things they put in our head, the things they're teaching our children. Dwayne Wade setting up his son to be a girl. And they're applauding this. Gabriel Union getting the President's Award. But we should have known when that basketball player years ago. I forgot what his name was. I think he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Came out gay. He got a call from Barack Obama saying how proud he was of him, which tells you what Barack Obama is all about. Oh, yeah, you can put a little sperm in a woman and give daughters. Is that really what you're thinking about? Is that really what you're all about? We know about Barack Obama. Those who are in know. Just the same way we know about Al Sharpton. And James Brown had some super insider stuff that they won't talk about. And there's a whole lot of it out there. And there'll be things that I'll be saying in the, in the times to come that I know being in this position, but that's irrelevant because we got to watch out for each other. And we got, we got to know how the goalposts are being moved each and every time to make progress. And we can't succumb to the mind games. We can't. The mind games in this phone. We can use this phone, right, as a tool, as a sword that they give us, the sword that's meant for us in our minds, and we can take this thing, and we can chop their heads off with it. Need be, if we need a real sword, we do the same thing. But it's about this. It's about this. And how we move. We just don't jump in a boat without a paddle and just let the stream take us where it goes. You're giving up on yourself if you do that. You must have a direction that you move in. You must know if I come to you, I'm not saying I'm no better than anybody else. I'm just saying prepare yourself that if the question is asked of you, where do you see yourself five years from now? Where do you see yourself two years from now? What are your goals? At least have goals. Because everything that I see in this world and on this planet is the product of a thought. Even if it didn't manifest right away, it kept trying. The street light that you see out there, the water faucet that you use, the toilet that you sit down in, the bed that you lay down in, the windows that you look out of, Everything is a product of a thought, and someone worked tirelessly toward that to manifest this thing and work it into perfection. 
What are you working tirelessly toward? I'm not saying this like I'm saying it condescending. I'm just saying this out into the out, out into the universe because guess what? I asked myself the same question. What did this day bring me? What are my plans for tomorrow? How do I reach my goals faster in a more efficient manner? What knowledge do I need to save on the, 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 the valuable assets that I have, not just cash, but assets that will serve me? Because there's no expiration date on soil that's in a great climate. Oh, Lance, you've been planting and we have so many trees of mangoes with hundreds of mangoes on it, but the expiration date is here. Let's stop investing in foolishness that we feel proud of that brings us no value. Don't you remember after 2008 and before that, things were good. They were giving mortgages away. And we took money. If the house was $250,000, we'd borrow $450,000 and get the biggest SUVs, with the biggest rims, the biggest TVs, stuff that has no value. So after everything crashed and the banks were bailed out, like Brother Dave said to you, those debts, it's not the government bankrupt. It's us who are American citizens who have to pay. But we think it's them. Oh, I don't have to pay. Yeah, it's us in the form of lost pensions and, and money that they've duped us with. Like Brother Dave said, what did he say? He only leaves the amount of money in the bank that he can afford to lose. Most of us should just Keep the money in the bank that we can pay our bills and hit those buttons because we're not holding cash anymore and going with checks that way or cashier checks or whatever. So we'll put everything in there. Invest in the gold, invest in the silver. It may take a little longer, longer to become liquid, but it's more solid because the price will go up. Like he said, you can get it for 30 bucks now. But maybe next year you won't be able to afford it. Cryptocurrency is not as certain as that. Cryptocurrency, like we found out, they can shut it down. I put X amount of money in there and got X amount of money out and they're not releasing it anymore. And they say, well, soon we're going to do it. No guarantee. We see these big companies with the glossy words and we say, wow. And we can get a little something out of it. But then after a while, we can get screwed too. And we learn the hard way. We got to go back to the organic way of living. We got to get out of this modern way of thinking where we trust these systems that are controlled by other people. They can stop and start and manipulate us whatever way they want. I'm going to have all the amenities in my home. But once it's paid for, and I pay for it out of pocket, Nobody's knocking my door. When the supermarkets close down with no food, I plan to be eating very well and GMO free. This is not a brag thing. This is a thing that took planning and hard work. Like I said, Mr. Skurve works very hard every day for that realization. And for those who, when we're finished, want to come out and enjoy, I invite you. We're going to have some good times. No matter what is happening in the outside world, we're going to have our own protection on multiple levels. We're going to have a way of feeding ourselves, collecting water, keeping energy with solar power off the grid. I don't want to be part of this system anymore. I see what is happening. I see what has happened. I see what's happening. And I see what could happen. That's the real insurance, not paying some person insurance and you crash your car and they kick you out or it's not as much as you thought or they nickel and dime you, but you were there for them to keep their company going. The banks is nothing but a glorified game of musical chairs. And when stuff hits the fan, guess what? When the butt looks for a seat to sit down on, those seats are filled up with butts already. It's like playing musical chairs with three seats and 25 people. There's going to be 22 people who are going to be crap out of luck. 
because they don't understand understand the game that they're playing. We have to have our own unique ways of creating wealth also. Your talents, that's what's going to do it for you because nobody can take that away from you. You get it directly. So if you reduce your debts and increase your value, you'll be okay. Then every day is a day to look forward to. Every day is a day that you can smile and take your time and do what it is that you have to do. And you'll just be in prosperity forevermore. Yeah, there are bumps in the roads and different things. I understand that. There, there are challenges in this world. But it's frightening to think about where America finds itself in other places like the UK and other places too. It's a big change right now, restructuring. And it's going to, any day now, tomorrow, next week, definitely not two years from now. And there are other things that are dangerous that we can do the fear mongering with. But we're not going to focus on it right now. We're going to maximize our value to ourselves and to give life to ourselves. Because the headlines, they work on that. This Republican against this Democrat. This person said this about this person. There's always somebody in Mississippi, some principal or some teacher calling a little boy a nigger. And we get upset at that. This is what they do. You have to see it. And know that we don't put energy all the way to those things unless they put their hand on our children or try to snuff them out and delete them. But this is what they do. They're distractions. We don't need to focus on anymore. What they don't want us to focus on is the eternal life that we have. Because they don't, because they don't have souls. That's what they act the way they do. So we don't even care what they say. I don't even care what they call me. Oh, you're racist. But I never had the power to turn legislature against them or decide where they live. But, you know, they want to twist around the world to fit them. Go on and scream and do what you do. I'll always be a rubber in their face and motivate others whether they want to come here or not to the motherland. That I'm the nigga that got away. I won't have to deal with the white cops anymore. I won't have to deal with those white folks, the Karens and all that stuff. Bye bye. I won't deal with you no more. And you all hate it. I'm not seeing anybody here. Take joy with me because I'm showing you how it can be done. I don't have a million dollars. I, I, if you knew how much I'm working with, you might say, oh my God, how could you do that? But it takes the willingness to sacrifice. We're getting real soon, and once we're there, nobody can take it away. They're also using these tactics, the fear mongering, because many people are coming out to the motherland, especially Ghana. So they're putting it all over the internet that the government came down and destroyed this house. Lance, what are you going to do? My paperwork is good. There's more to the story than BCI. Are they going to go to every American, every diasporan, every person from the UK and rip down the houses for what? But you notice Kamala Harris didn't say anything about that particular story. And she was in Cape Coast. Like I said, they're trying to push the LGBTQ thing here, trying to destroy the black family here. They're trying to push this mess over here. It's here. When I go to the mall, I see about five of them, six of them, ten of them sometime in a day. But they know to keep quiet with that stuff. Why do they have to push that stuff out? But they want to change things. With Uganda, I stand with Uganda. They ain't going for it. So why is the push for that? Right? It's a long-term thing. They want that ruling over here so they can get over here easier and get the resources and get those kind of folks in power. Because that's what's running the world. Many of our so-called, not ours, but I'm just saying what we see are our leaders, they're going to be there whether we voted for them or not. This system will go on without you. A system that doesn't want you is going to cater to you because you vote. Oh, our, vo our votes count. No, they don't. No, they don't. Because whoever they want in there is going to be in there. You best believe that. The country was not put together for you. 
And for those who feel that politics is the answer, you keep wasting your time because where has it gotten us as a people in America? We're worse off than we've ever been just because there's a few stars that, that say, I've made it, and we live through them, and they mansion and attention and all of this stuff. Look what's happening behind the scenes. It never ends. They come by our moment with those demons are never going to stop. You best believe that. I was never duped into that. I already knew what it was from very young. Why would you? Something that could turn on you just because a snake doesn't bite the first time because his stomach is full. You think you can lay up in the bed with that snake and digest the food and get hungry? You're going to wake up, wake up in a sorry state of affairs. When you wake up and you find that you got that venom going through your veins in a minute to live because the snake bit you. I've had many near bites in my life. I'm not trying to hang around and get even more. Yes, and even where our property is in that area, you might see a, a king cobra. You might see a python. We're going to wall it off high enough and put enough onions around, like you said, genre, to keep things right. You don't even see that because they live peacefully. They have the environment. They have all the woods and country to go to. They don't bother you like that. They don't bother you like that. But that beast that we're living with in America, that's trying to destroy the world? Nah, that's the one you got to watch out for. Anyway, yeah, R Rwanda uh, uh, in Tanzania. Yeah, yeah, that's the spot. For me, I like Kenya because we have goals that just don't stay here. We have goals and aspirations and things that we'll be working on very soon, and that's the next level. Remember, I told you this here first. Until that, we're enjoying everything. We're moving according to plan. And we can rest while moving forward and take our pace. Tonight when I sleep, I'm going to sleep deep. I didn't wake up today until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I didn't feel guilty at all because I knew I was going to put a full day in of work, putting this show together, doing the rooftop and some things behind the scenes. I'm going to go to bed. Got my batteries charged up on my cameras. Let's see what I can go out and get tomorrow. This show was the 10 o'clock show, or actually the 6 o'clock 6 o'clock show. Push back a little bit. We were supposed to do it last night, but Brother Dave had uh, misplaced his keys. And those were some very important keys that he had. So I said, listen, let's do it tomorrow night. So those things will happen. But we forge forward. We're here. We got to keep our minds right. We got to keep ourselves um, mentally right for the battles that come, but the same point we have our homes, not just house, but our homes or family, not just the DNA shared people because it can turn on you too, but our inner circles that we can enjoy life really truly, and not just accumulate things around us thinking that's going to bring us joy because it's not. I don't play that game. I don't care about certain things. I don't even have a car right now. I don't know if I'll ever have a car again. <laughs> I don't care. Transportation is cheap. I might get one. Not based on it has to be this to impress anybody. Might be one of them little tiny pickup trucks. They got some tiny little toy pickup trucks with tight suspensions. I don't go to many places. And I will. I might get something like that to get around and haul my stuff. And me, Mrs. Scurve, do all work in the yard and be happy. Right? So that's what it's all about. But anyway, I'm going to skip down out of here. I'm still here. But I'm going to get that out of here, and um, we're going to do some good shows this week. Let me just see what song it is right here. Good, good, good. Anyway, salute to my brothers. Much love to my sisters. Tomorrow's another day. More content as we move about the earth effortlessly. Things fall into my lap. We report it. What's come to our head. Also, again, I want to say, for those who have signed up for the membership channel on YouTube, I'm going to take that down. If you still want to support with the same $5 or more, if you want, bring it on over to Patreon. I'm going to be pushing Patreon more because that's where it's at. Why? I have a Patreon and I have a YouTube membership page. I don't trust YouTube. On Patreon, we've been putting up some hardcore stuff, right? Put one last night about Kamala Harris and her trip to Ghana. And we use a little spicy language and we're just going to let it all hang out. The things I said last night 
And the things Mr. Scurve said last night would, let, would have us ended up being banned right now. Now, on the membership, YouTube membership, they do still have their community guidelines, which means I'm still really handcuffed and can't move, right? So I'm not mad. I'm telling you to pull your membership away from the YouTube membership page. I'm not sure I can kill it if you don't see it anymore because I can't put the content that you really want to see there. Here, I know how to get close to the line and say a few things, but I want to be able to go in hardcore every day with some audio. Some of it will be video, but a lot will be audio. And when I do the juicy, juicy, juicy videos, when I do the interviews here or the unbelly of where I live now, I'll put those things up uncensored. You will see it because I have my bags and I have my cameras with me all the time. I'm always strapped. I big cameras, small cameras. I'm going to work it. If you're walking up on the mountain, walking here, it'll be here. But go to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash landserve. That's where you show the support. And I promise to put up something every day. Right now, I didn't do anything today, but tomorrow we're going to get some audio on there. And it's going to be about something that's happening in the world and insight, whatever. But yeah, that's what it's all about. Thank you so much for understanding. Thank you so much for rolling with me. And um, it's a beautiful thing. Let me find a song to play. I'm going to wet my whistle and I'm going to hit the sack. All right. So here you go. When your government don't make me legal. showed up in our country telling us of a land filled with luxury he said black man follow me to america there you'll find more gold for your labor our four parents were tricked onto his boat since that time we've been wrestling with the gold we landed here in jamestown virginia 400 years to suffer so my friend it's easy to tell white man heaven is black man hell <laughs> When the slave master wanted to have some sport, he would heap on our parents' cruelties of the worst sort, burn them at stake, hang them on trees. His ears were deaf to our parents' pleas. Though you were pregnant, black woman, you pull the plow like a horse, like a dog, even a cow. He filled your womb with his wicked seed. His half white children, you were made to breed. Oh, my friend, it's easy to tell. White man heaven is a black man hell. <laughs> called Negro, open up your eyes, black man everywhere, 
is on the rise. He has kicked the white man out of Asia, and he's going fast out of Africa. With every ounce of strength and breath, his cry is give us liberty or give us death. The whole black world has their eyes on you. To see what the so-called Negro is going to do So my friend, it's easy to tell Our unity will give the white man hell God made a promise To Abraham His would be a stranger in a foreign land They would suffer and be afflicted Four hundred years But he would come Wipe away their tears Our God and Savior Allah has come He has declared the white man's day is done He has given us a divine messenger One prophesied to come His name is Elijah We now can stand up the whole world to tell Our God has come to give us heaven and take the devil into Why are we called Negroes? Why are we deaf, dumb, and blind? Why is everybody making progress, yet we seem to be lagging so far behind? Why are we mistreated? Why are we in this condition, stripped of our names, our language, our culture, our God? and our religion. Here in America, all of our religious training has been gotten by the preacher. He has told us of a heaven way up in the sky that we can't enjoy now, but rather after we die. But all of the years that we're living, for us there's nothing but hell, pain, torture, and misgiving. Yet the Bible speaks of a heaven filled with material luxury, which the white man and the preacher has right here, so we see. So my friend, take it for what it's worth. Your heaven and your hell is right here on this earth. So let's check back into history, which rewards all research and tells us plainly before the white man gained entry to the east, he was living in the caves of Europe, a ravenous beast, eating juniper roots and eating flesh raw, till God sent Moses to civilize him and teach him the law. Then following Marco Polo, an explorer, he gained entry into Asia and Africa. From China he took silk and gunpowder, from India he took jute, manganese, and rubber. He raped Africa of her diamonds and her gold. From Mideast he took barrels of oil untold. Raping, robbing, and murdering everything in his path. The whole black world has tasted of the white man's wrath. So my friend, it's not hard to tell. A white man's heaven is a black man's hell. Be 
came to America, we were living in the east. By the Nile River, we were living in luxury, enjoying freedom, justice, and equality. We wore silken robes and slippers of gold. We were the wealthiest and the wisest people, I'm told. Now we are the poorest of the poor. Nobody wants us at their door. So my friend, it's easy to tell. White man heaven is black man hell. When the white man came to America, he told the Indian, I am your white brother. He said, red man, I'll treat you the best. Yet and still he pushed the Indian further west with his white woman and fire water. With tricks and lies, he stole America, the original owner of this nation. is cooped up on a reservation, so my friend is easy to tell. White man heaven is black man hell. He needed someone to work the land His back was too weak He needed you black man So he commissioned Sir John Hawkins To commit the world's most grievous sin To take a man who's born to be free And bring him down to slavery To sell a man as merchandise on his body put a price Oh my friend it's easy to tell White man heaven is black man hell